Hi everybody! Today I have a new plugin for you, and this is again a MIDI plugin. It is the Tucan Studios MIDI Arpeggiator. Of course, that's a plugin that transfers chords into arpeggios. For those who don't know what that is, let's briefly explain that. Here I have the WTFM synthesizer, and now when I play a chord, it sounds like this. And when I play the chord as an arpeggio, it would sound like this. So this simply means we're not playing all notes at once, but we're playing them one after another. And that's not really a new idea. Let me give you some examples from the music history. A very famous piece of music that is based on an arpeggio is Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. And another very famous thing would be this. But that were arpeggios that were actually played. And one of the earliest examples for arpeggios that are generated, or machine made, or how you want to call it, would be the Who. And of course we all know the famous arpeggios from the 80s. And from the 90s. So now let's have a look at the plugin. We're starting at that row of buttons here on the top. And the first one is very simple. It's basically a MIDI through or bypass knob. So I can simply play my keyboard as usual. Now let's come to the second knob. This is the up knob and this plays my arpeggios upwards. It can sound like this. So these are supposed to be eighth notes. Let's hear them together with the drum computer so you can hear what I mean. And I think you all heard that. I go to the MIDI through mode again to show you. What it actually does is this. But of course I'm lazy, so I can select this up mode and the machine no plays it while I only have to press the keys at once. And now down here, I can select the notes length. So if I play uh, faster, or slower and of course I can select all kinds of stuff like triplets or dotted notes and I can adjust the shuffle mode and I can even set this not to sync from the tempo of my project to a speed that I can adjust here. Okay let's go back here and here the next mode this is the down mode So it's not playing bum bum bum, it's playing bum bum bum. And then we have this up down mode, so it's first playing up and then playing down. And we have a random mode, so we'll play the notes in a random order. And to make this a bit more interesting, we can click no doubles so we don't have repeating notes. Now let's see the options we have here in the second row. For example, in the up and the down mode we have the same options. Let's choose the up mode and say we want to add one note. And what it basically does, I'll show you on the keyboard, <clears throat> when I only play three notes like this, or what I play is this, and it makes this. You can imagine that this could be a problem because we're only playing three notes and this wouldn't simply fill a whole bar or half a bar. So when I enable that option, add a note, what it does, it plays the first note again after the pattern. So I press only these three keys and it plays this. And when repeating, it would be playing this. Let's hear that. And these three buttons are only available if we have this add note feature on. And the first one is the alternative octave. So it will play it one octave higher than before. And the next one, every octave, brings us to this feature down here, the octaves feature. It plays the pattern in the original octave and then, for example, one octave higher and then repeating from the bottom again, like this. And you hear, now we're in a way off. 
So we want this added note not at the end of a whole pattern, which would include all the octaves, but we want this added note in every octave. And now the last knob simply makes the edit note silent, so it won't play a note, it will play a rest instead. Now we have one option more, which we didn't see before, and this is um, the repeat lowest and highest in the up and down mode. It's a bit like this add note feature, so it will, as the name says, repeat the lowest and the highest note of a pattern. And while we're talking about repeating notes, let's go back to this up again and let's turn off the silent mode. Maybe choose four octaves and this time a higher speed. And let's see this repeats feature. And now it's set on one, so every note is played once. And now when I set it to two, every note is played twice. Now we have one more slider we didn't discuss before and this is the velocity slider and this is simply the output velocity of the pattern notes and if you set this down to zero it will be the velocity that you actually played for each of the keys on your keyboard but in most cases we want them to have a fixed velocity so our arpeggios sound more consistent. And now we have this row here on the bottom we have the hold knob and I can click the knob and I can use the pedal of my keyboard. And when I hold the pedal, the hold is on. And when I release the pedal, the hold is off again, of course. And when I just tap the pedal once, the hold stays on. And when I tap it again, the hold is off again. And now what does the hold do? It does like this. I can play my chord. I can play the chord, tap the pedal and release the keys and it will still play my pattern. And that's not all. While it plays the pattern, I can play additional notes on my keyboards, which will not become part of the pattern. Then there is this knob, Sync to DAW. And there's a long explanation here, but the simple explanation would be, for example, I want it to sync on quarter notes, and now my MIDI input will be quantized to quarter notes. But of course, if I play shortly after a quarter note, it can't transfer this in time back because the software couldn't know I will play then, but it will quantize the next step of the pattern. And if I play a bit before the quarter note of my grid, the arpeggiator will wait and play the note on the correct grid position. But if you don't want that, simply switch it off. And of course, if you're working with quantized MIDI and not playing live, you don't need that feature at all. And while talking about quantized MIDI, that brings us to the next knob, and this is the grace time. Let me show you an example. So I record what I play, and of course it plays correctly. But now when I take a look in my MIDI editor and I zoom in, we can see that the middle note was the first one I pressed, then the lowest and then the highest. And this feature that I called grace time adjusts a time window from the first key over a few milliseconds and it will collect all the notes and if you for example have the up pattern it will have collected all the three notes and start with the lowest. If we had no grace time, which is possible, simply turn it to zero, the arpeggiator must start with this middle note because it can't predict which notes will come along with it. So let's close this and here you can adjust that grace time. And then we have that last knob, the keep timing knob. So imagine you're playing quarter notes, arpeggios, and then changing the chord, and we have no keep timing on, what could happen is this. And with the keep timing knob, we can say how many pattern steps it should keep that timing. So it won't restart on playing a new chord. Because if that value is too high, it can also get in the way of your playing. And well, 
that's it for today. I hope you have fun with the plugin. I hope you have fun with all the other plugins and bye bye.